Those who are familiar with Schopenhauer's philosophy know how he thought music was the most metaphysical art, and how music is a copy of the will itself. To put it in a language that everyone can understand, music opens a door to understanding how the world is in its essence. What you might not know, however, is that Schopenhauer was inspired by Plato to a great extent, and it was Plato who long before Schopenhauer thought music was more than just beautiful melodies. This is exactly what Plato's Timaios is all about, because the cosmology that we encounter in Timaios is described, metaphorically speaking, as a musical performance. If you want to know what Plato thought about music, there are two main dialogues to read, The Republic and Timaios. I recommend reading these two dialogues side by side because when we read The Republic, we see how Plato heavily criticizes music and literally bans all sorts of musical phenomena in his ideal state. But when we read Timaios, we see how he praises the beauty of the world as something harmonious in a musical sense. Timaeus is a bizarre dialogue in which Plato describes how the universe was created by a craftsman who is referred to as the Demiurge, spelled D-E-M-I-U-R-G-E. Timaeus, who tells us how the craftsman created the universe, starts with a distinction between being, which is eternal, and becoming, which has no share in being. One of the differences between these two is that the former can be grasped by thought and the latter by perception. Timaeus tells us that the cosmos was created. So, in the Platonic jargon, we can say that the cosmos became. Since the cosmos became, it means that it can be sensed, it is perceptible. Now, this is where we get some weird dose of aesthetic theory. Timaeus tells us, anything created on the model of being must be beautiful. Since the cosmos does happen to be beautiful, Timaeus concludes that its creator must have made it as a copy of eternal being. Things get even weirder, but if you come across anything weird in Plato's Timaeus, and there are plenty of weird things, believe me. Keep in mind that Temayos tells his audience that his account of the cosmos is only a hypothesis, because no human account of the created cosmos could be more than likely. In what we are told by Timaeus, music has a kind of sensual force, potentially affecting a reorientation of the soul. The created world is alive, it has a soul and a mind. Everything visible was moving in a disordered and chaotic fashion, so he gave it order. Since what has a mind is better than what is mindless, and since nothing without a soul can have a mind, he created this everything as a living being with a soul. The craftsman uses the four elements to create the cosmos, and he uses all fire, air, water, and earth available. He does that so we wouldn't end up with a second universe because of the remainder of the elements. The cosmos has the best shape, which is a sphere, and also it has the best movement, which is circular rotation. In a previous video, I tried to explain what happens next, but I will briefly remind you of it here. The soul of the world is set within this spherical rotating body. The soul is forcefully made of a mixture of sameness and otherness, which Timaeus also calls a mixture of being and becoming. This mixture is then divided in a series of proportions that have musical significance. You can go back to the previous episode to find more about this part of Plato's dialogue. Timaeus says, 
After the craftsman has created these proportions, he cuts the whole system in two along its length and then joins the ends of each of the two strips to each other, creating two circles which he sets rotating the one within the other. If you know anything about music theory, this should remind you of a monochord. By cutting a monochord in half, you basically produce the same tone one octave higher. If you don't know what a monochord is and what philosophical and musical significance it has, I recommend you Google the two keywords monochord and Pythagoras. Back to the story. Then the whole thing gets really bizarre. Timaeus describes sensation as something kinetic, and because of the mortal's ability to perceive things, the concord of the universe turns into discord. Then there is talk of harmony and rhythm. I will read you a section from Timaeus. And harmony, whose movements are akin to the orbits within our souls, is a gift of the muses if our dealings with them are guided by understanding, not for irrational pleasure, for which people nowadays seem to make use of it, but to serve as an ally in the fight to bring order to any orbit in our souls that has become unharmonized, and make it concordant with itself. Rhythm too has likewise been given us by the muses for the same purpose, to assist us. There you have it become a musicologist, and you can create a universe like the Demiurge. Before ending this episode, I would like to briefly say something about the Republic as well. The Republic is much more accessible to the reader, so I don't want to tarry on it for long. Probably the only thing you need to know about it is that, in it, music is seen as something political and ethical it poses politico-ethical issues. Plato thinks that musical training is a potent instrument for forming citizens. He doesn't ban music itself, but he does ban many musical phenomena in his ideal state. Perhaps what Plato appreciates about music is not really the melodies, but music as an idea. For instance, in Timaeus, it's not the case that the planets and the cosmos produce harmonic notes, but that they follow the musical rules of harmony. It's kind of the same thing in the Republic. He appreciates music as a rational activity. So music is not really something that you would listen to to become moved by it when you are sad or when you are happy. It's something that you would study like mathematics. It's all about reason. Emotions are not really important for Plato here. And there are passages and lines in the dialogue that might make you think that he thinks of music as something aesthetic and something pleasurable in the way that we think of music nowadays. But really you should read it in the Platonic context. So for instance, somewhere he rhetorically asks, what should be the end of music if not the love of beauty? Now for Plato, beauty is not something that would just like drive you mad with sensation. It's not something sublime. It's just not something that you would stare at and become overwhelmed in an emotional sense. It's a rational activity. It's a rational thing. Beauty is something to be grasped intellectually and rationally. You might see this as counterintuitive, but Plato lived in a different culture and he had his own kind of philosophy. And then there are these funny passages. I'm gonna read you one. Did you ever observe the effect on the mind itself of exclusive devotion to gymnastic or the opposite effect of an exclusive devotion to music? the one producing a temper of hardness and ferocity, the other of softness and effeminacy. And then we get an even funnier response which goes like, I am quite aware that the mere athlete becomes too much of a savage and that the mere musician is melted and softened beyond what is good for him. 
Now this is like hilarious on many levels, but just like notice how Plato thinks of musicians as people who are too emotional. Like he thinks of them as over the top histrionic people. Also notice that he is really concerned with the mind. He is asking about the effects of music on the mind. It's really an intellectual activity for him and the emotional side of music can basically melt away your reason. That's all for today. If anything, please do leave a comment. Also, if you liked this episode, do not forget to share it on social media. Thank you.